Let us look at question number 41 now students. It is given that y gram of a non-volatile organic substance of molecular mass m is dissolved in 250 gram of benzene. The molar elevation constant of benzene is kb. Elevation in its boiling point is given by. So if you talk about the delta tb value which is the elevation in boiling point it is given by kb into m. So all that is left is to find out the molality of the solution. So it is given to us that y gram is present in 250 gram of benzene. So if you talk about 1 kg of benzene, so 1 kg of benzene is going to contain 4 y grams and if you talk about the moles, it is going to contain 4 y by the molar mass number of moles present in 1 kg. So this is the molality of the solute students, it is given by 4 y by m and if you talk about the delta tb value, it will be given by 4 y by m into kb. So if you look at the options which are given to us, we can clearly see that we have to select the first option is the correct answer to this question. Let us look at the next question. Question number 42. Consider the following unbalanced reaction sequence. So we have in the first reaction, calcium carbonate dissociating into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is allowed to react with excess of carbon to form carbon monoxide. And in the third reaction, the carbon monoxide is allowed to react with I2O5 to form CO2 and I2. So it is further given to us that I2 produced in this reaction, which is the third reaction, it requires 400 ml of 0.02 molar hyposolution. The minimum amount of calcium carbonate in grams taken in reaction 1 is. So if you talk about the moles or the millimoles of the I2 produced, it is quantitatively estimated by reaction with hypo. So if you talk about the reaction of I2 with hypo, we have the MEQ of hypo, which is given by 400 into 0 0.02 into the N factor. The N factor of hypo is 1. So we have MEQ of hypo. It shall be equal to MEQ of I2. So we can have M millimoles into the N factor. The N factor of I2 is equal to 2. So this is the MEQ of I2. So in solving, we have the millimoles of I2 equal to 4. Okay. Now all that is left is to balance these given reactions. So the first reaction is already balanced. In order to balance the second reaction, we just have to add a 2 on the right hand side. So it gives 2 Cu. And if you talk about the balancing of the third reaction, we have carbon monoxide and we have I2O5. The carbon monoxide is converting into CO2 whereas I2O5 is converting into I2. So if we talk about the oxidation states of the species present, carbon is present in plus 2. Now here carbon is present in plus 4. So the N factor is equal to 2 for carbon monoxide. If you talk about the oxygen state of I in I2O5, it is present in plus 5, whereas in I2 it is present in 0. So the N factor shall be equal to 10 as every iodine molecule will gain 5 electrons. So in order to balance this reaction, we just have to cross multiply the N factors. So we're going to have 5CO plus I2O5 reacting to give us 5CO2 along with the formation of I2. So, we now have balance reactions. The millimoles of I2 formed is equal to 4. So, if we talk about the millimoles of CO, the millimoles of CO will be 5 times this value, which will be equal to 20. And if you talk about the moles of CO2, which were used up in the second reaction, it is going to be half the number of moles of CO produced. So, we have 10 millimoles of CO2 produced in the first reaction, which is reacting in the second reaction. So, we have 10 millimoles of CO2 produced which must mean that the moles of calcium carbonate is also equal to 10 millimoles. So if we talk about the mass, it will be equal to 10 into 10 to the power minus 3, which is the number of moles, into the molar mass, which is given by 100 grams. So we have a total of 1 gram of calcium carbonate reacting in the first reaction. So if we talk about the correct option, we can clearly see that we have to mark the second option as correct. Let us look at the next question. Question number 43 which says two liquids A and B form an ideal solution. At 300 Kelvin, the vapor pressure of the solution containing one mole of A and three moles of B is 550 mmHg. At the same temperature, if one more mole of B is added to this solution, the vapor pressure increased by 10 mm of Hg. So we have to comment on the P0 and the PB0 values. So if we talk about the solution which was 
prepared initially there was one mole of a and three moles of b so the mole fraction of a will be given by 1 by 4 whereas the mole fraction of b will be given by 3 by 4 if you talk about the total pressure it is given to us that the solution is ideal so it is going to follow Raoult's law so pt will be given by p a naught x a plus p b naught x b total pressure given to us is 550 mmhg this will be equal to p a naught into 1 by 4 plus p b naught into 3 by 4 so this one simplification gives us 2200 equal to p a naught plus 3 p b naught now if you talk about the second data which is given to us which we can call as the final data in this case we have added one mole extra of b so the chi a will be equal to 1 by 5 as the total number of moles has increased to 5 in this case and the mole fraction of b shall be equal to 4 by 5 now if we try and apply the Raoult's law we are going to have pt dash we can call this as xa dash and xb dash so p a naught xa dash plus p b naught xb dash so we are going to have 560 equal to p a naught into 1 by 5 plus p b naught into 4 by 5 so in simplification this is going to give us 2800 equal to p a naught plus 4 p b naught so if we try and compare the equations 1 and 2 we are going to have the value of p b naught equal to 600 whereas the value of p a naught shall come out to be equal to 400 in the respective units so students looking at the options we can clearly see that we have to select the first option is the correct answer let us look at the next question let us look at question number 44 now we have been given four complex ions and we have to select that complex ion which has the greatest value of the crystal field splitting energy so the cfse value shall be directly proportional to the strength of the ligand if all other factors are same so if you look at the ligands given to us, we have OH minus, we have Cl minus, we have Cn minus and we have H2O. So out of these given ligands, we know that the cyanide ions are the strongest. So the third complex is going to have the maximum value of the crystal field splitting energy. So for this question students, we have to select the correct option as option 3. Let us look at the next question. Let us look at question number 45 now students. Cyanide process or MacArthur for a cyanide process in which metal is leached with a dilute solution of NaCN or KCN in presence of air is used for the extraction of so students we know that the MacArthur forest cyanide process is used for the extraction of silver or gold so we can have the reactions so Ag plus Cn minus in presence of O2 it forms AgCn whole twice negative so we can clearly see that for this question we have to select the second option as the correct answer let us look at the next question 